Now we will look at how data is uh, inserted into an anchor model. Anchor modeling relies heavily on the use of uh, surrogate keys and uh, usually we let the database generate these keys by um, having an uh, identity uh, column in the anchor. So we let the identity also uh, automatically increment itself. So what you can do when you insert data, and now we're going to look at uh, an OLTP environment, uh, is to directly insert it into the base tables. But what we have done is to create some helper items that uh, makes it easier. Uh, so first I'm going to uh, insert some data into a knot. Typically knots are not uh, uh, automatically uh, updated with data, so um, uh, these are usually uh, created in some kind of script uh, similar to what I'm executing right now. Um, like that. Uh, so we have three values there. Now one of the helper things that we have is a trigger uh, this is an insert trigger that we have created on the latest view, making it possible to actually insert values into the view. Uh, so I'm going to begin with uh, inserting some values into the dish view here, and I'm not going to provide anything, uh, any identity uh, for the anchor here, uh, which means that I wanted to create a new identity and associate the name I've given here. Uh, with that identity. Uh, and I also have to provide uh, some uh, numbers for the, uh, some batch numbers for the metadata, metadata here. So when I execute this one, uh, I will have created uh, a row, and you can see it here in the dish uh, latest view. So it, it has filled the anchor table uh, as well as the dish name attribute table. We can see that from the view here. Uh, but the rest uh, of the fields are null values right now because we don't have any rows in these tables yet. Uh, so what I can do now is uh, I can do another insert here into the uh, type table uh, telling us that this is a main course uh, from the not earlier. Uh, so if I look at it again now after inserting this, you can see that now we also have a type specified for this uh, dish. Uh, so what I did now was I did an insert, but it behaved uh, like an update when I look at the view. Uh, I can also do it with, um, so we can finish this one, so I can do it with the price because the price is still lacking here. So I'm going to run it and let us look at the view. And you can see that now we also have a price specified here and the price was a historized attribute so we can also see that this price was valid from the 1st of January 2009 uh, but let's say at some later point in time the price changes so here I have uh, another insert uh, where I've changed the price and set a later uh, valid from date uh, I've also incremented the metadata so to indicate that this is happening later so I run that and let us look at the dish again. So here you can see that now uh, the uh, price in the latest view has been replaced. So now it's uh, 21.95 from the 1st of January 2010 instead. Um, of course the row, um, the, the previous price is uh, still available from the attribute and I could uh, retrieve it from the attribute itself or the point in time view. Um, if I don't want to do it uh, iteratively and step by step like I did, I can of course uh, insert everything at once into the dish. And so this creates a dish uh, called tiramisu. It's a dessert. It's uh, 9.95, uh, and that price is valid from the 1st of January 2009. So if I execute this and uh, look at the view again, you can see that now we have two rows. Uh, one uh, for the rigatoni al pollo and one for the tiramisu. So that's how easy it is to insert uh, into the latest view with uh, the trigger on it that is automatically generated for you.